Okay, so this is uh, actually based on some ideas and some work I actually did a number of years ago. Um, never really did anything with it because it wasn't actually very easy to do back then. Um, but I've got access to some infrastructure that makes it a little easy this time. Uh, so the basic idea is there's this uh, public exchange, this peering fabric. This is where a number of routers may be connected to an Equinix or switching data or, uh, or D6 or, or any other of the dozens of exchanges. And what we want to try to do is figure out who's peering with who on the, on the public uh, exchange fabric. And so what you have to do, and it's, it's not anything that's uh, not obvious, but you get behind the network that you want to figure out uh, who has peering relationships with others and do trace routes. And if you can uh, trace route to uh, one of the public peering addresses and get a response, you can presume that they're, they're peered. And so, of course, uh, you have to go find out all these uh, address blocks that the exchange uses, and you have to somehow get behind um, all these networks to build this graph. So one easy way to do that uh, is to use the, the peering DB. There's a list of approaching uh, 200 exchanges in there, and there's at least 125 prefixes that you can get them, uh, which are mostly 24s, but there's some slash 19s and some 25s and, and some smallers. And then you get a number of remote hosts, uh, which may be easier for some than others. I have access to a number of uh, machines around the net on different providers. Uh, and as well as the, there's a nice uh, toolkit that you can use, uh, the script route, which is essentially uh, kind of based on the Planet Lab infrastructure, and you just uh, launch uh, Ruby-based uh, tools and commands, and they have everything all pre-built for doing trace route, and you essentially launch your trace route uh, using any of the servers that are part of the script route network, so you can get behind those networks, or at least a, a great deal of them. And then you get your trace route output, and then you start parsing through that, and then see who's actually peered. So I did that, and uh, I just used Speakeasy because that was one of the first ones I, I wanted to graph for this talk. Um, and so I discovered that uh, at the five major Equinix locations, this is what their peering graph looks like. So they're the center, and all the, the nodes at the edges are uh, people they're peered with. Now, um, uh, the, the work that I did is maybe not exact. It, I wasn't real rigorous in doing this, so if someone from Speakeasy is looking at this and, and sees that the numbers are slightly off, that may be. Um, I may have missed uh, some here and there. Uh, and in fact, one of the things I discovered right away is that there, there was five that they were at at the Equinix exchanges here in North America. Uh, they list four on their peering page, and they list uh, four on the peering DB. The, the, those two sets of four are not congruent. So this is maybe a nice way to actually kind of verify your configuration or someone else's configuration. I'll uh, be trying to find out where, where people are at and who they're peering with. So then you can go further and you can do an ex entire exchange peering graph. So if you can get behind enough networks, uh, you can actually start to build up to see who really peers with who. And uh, depending if you can get in, behind enough networks um, and launch enough trace routes and do the analysis, you could, you could build something like this. Um, this is, again, this is a sample. This is not everyone at the Equinix Ashburn, but it's, it's sort of a subset of, of some networks and who they're connected to, and some fairly significant ones like AT&T and, and Hurricane and, and some others. And so the, maybe the obvious question is then, you know, is, is this something that we should be able to do? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is the, uh, you know, how, how is this possible? Why can you actually do this? So people, in my experience, and just looking at this sort of tangentially, is, is that the, the networks who are at these exchanges at least tend to advertise those exchange net blocks within their own networks, so internally. So if you're behind with those networks, you can get to those public addresses at the exchange. Uh, a few do seem to announce them publicly and to customers or peers for some reason. I, I don't know exactly why this is. My guess is that maybe a uh, default configuration of a reduced UV connected, uh, perhaps. Uh, I actually inquired one of the networks this afternoon about why they do that, and I got sort of an odd answer. I'm not clear on why, uh, but apparently they said it was uh, as, a, as a service to their customers, and I, I don't know why any customers would want to see the... Um, public address space, um, but that was their answer. Um, I think they didn't really have a lot of time to actually want to spend on this, and I don't blame them. Uh, so do we care about this? You know, I don't know. This is maybe just sort of interesting, but is it necessarily a bad thing? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's not so much, but uh, it opens up some possibilities for something maybe interesting to people to work on. Maybe it makes some certain attacks uh, more possible or uh, enable some. Um, I'm almost done. If you, can you wait one second? 
Sure. Uh, it, so it maybe enables some sorts of attacks, maybe geographic-based attacks. So in North America, this may not be such an issue because we have lots of exchanges and, and lots of uh, lots of places, but maybe for smaller markets, this may be an issue. Um, some people may be concerned about enumeration or privacy issues. Um, obviously, this might be neat for researchers to actually understand topology better. Um, maybe certain exchange operators may want to do market research, maybe not necessarily on their own exchanges, but to see how they compare to other exchanges. Um, and maybe they would hire someone to do surveys of this, uh, like this. Uh, you may even be able to figure out where you actually want to go and, and peer uh, at based on uh, building these sorts of maps. Uh, and then lastly, something uh, Danny McPherson pointed out to me, I sort of just made it in time for the slides, is uh, this may enable easier stealing of, of transit if you can get, uh, if someone is actually advertising this public address space either globally or, or from within their network, maybe to set up a tunnel and actually use uh, that facility to actually uh, use their, uh, use that to actually transit through uh, those pairing addresses. Um, not having to use your own. And so just a real quick, I'd be interested if anyone actually thinks this is sort of worthwhile where I should spend any more time on this or if this is enough, this is, uh, uh, or if you'd want to see like the Dwayne Wessels kind of maps on this sort of thing and maybe animations about, uh, you know, how peering evolves over time. Just maybe a quick show of hands, is this sort of interesting? Maybe someone want me to, or have someone actually do more of these maps or graphs? Is this any value? Not so much? Okay. Someone have a question over here? Hi, Louis Lee, Equinix. Sorry. Uh, I've spoken with some of our customers about why they're announcing the exchange uh, subnet. And uh, they've an one answer, which I have accepted from them, is that they announce only to their transit uh, customers to facilitate a trace route that the customer might do so it doesn't look like that there is some kind of bad stuff going on at the exchange interface uh, so that their trace will pack to get back to them. Okay. okay, thank you. This is derived from recommendations in about February 1997 at NANOG. I, I missed the first part. Can you say it again? Randy Bush, IJ. Oh. This, what it, Louis just described, is oh. specifically from recommendations made by a group, out of a group of backbone operators for how to operate at an exchange point, which is to announce the exchange point fabric down, not to peers. Okay. And is, is it maybe also used for monitoring, too, I imagine? Yeah. People being able to monitor their, their own yeah. stuff. So. I mean, your network and your customers want to see right. that, but you don't want to announce sure. it to peers. They should be announcing it to their customers. Sure. Some people do seem to announce it globally in certain cases, and certain exchanges seem to be um, better about it than others. So. But thanks. Okay. Thank you.